this is Jim, Sylog's Plastic Hubs. I hope you enjoyed the video that I'm putting together today, and uh, I know I had fun making the project, so hope you enjoy it. Have a great day, and stick around and watch the video. Hi. We have a flag bracket. Now, I'm not going to duplicate this flag bracket exactly. This flag bracket was hanging on our front porch with a bit of an angle to hold the flag basically straight out. And you'll see it's aluminum cast piece and broke. I could go get another one now, that's the truth. But because some of the problems we've had for flags, I want to make in the wind. I want to make a steel one. I'm going to weld it up. It's going to be a weld one. So, first thing I'm going to do is I haven't got a piece of tubing, but I got some solid bar stock. So, my plan here is, is I'm going to turn me a solid piece of bar stock out. Well, I basically got a piece of this going to clean it up and bore it. To the, so that we can put the flag in it on one end here and on the other end we'll weld it to a plate I got a piece of plate that I'm going to cut out and drill these holes in then we're going to weld it to a plate so that's the plan so that's what we're going to be doing today All right, the first thing I'm going to do is not no real big deal but I haven't gotten any so I'm going to knock this rust off from my material being stored outside. Take me a little piece of 80 grit paper and I'm just going to clean it up just like this. De-rust it. And so I'll have a pretty, you know, clean work surface to work with because we're going to weld on this and everything. So I'm going to turn it over. That's all I'm doing. Scrap up and laid, you know, so I got a rag and I'll clean up afterwards here. Do a little quick clean up. You know, as you know, my shop's small. And I really just be nice to have some inside storage for some steel, but I just don't have the space. So, I think this is 1018 or something I picked up. I have. I have no real idea, but I'm thinking it's probably that or 1141 or something. It's not a leaded steel, so, so uh, I know that much. So we'll just have to see. Hang in there. The way I'm just doing a couple of facing cuts here to kind of clean it up a little bit. In case you're wondering, you know, I've showed a lot of the my homemade spill master is what it was. I actually bought a spill master a long time ago and I still use it. You see it here in the lathe, so. But, you know, I wanted cups in other places. The spill masters are good cups. But eight or nine dollars a piece are a little pricey and that's the reason I made those homemade ones up. Good product though. Spaced off. I'm gonna flip. I'm gonna debar it. I'm gonna chamfer it and uh, flip it over the other end and get it cleaned up. It's not a specific length to this thing. It's just a uh, just a piece. And like I say, this this piece of metal, particular steel, this happened to be in my outside saw. I got a couple of pieces and looked at it and brought it in. This will this will make it. I just don't have no tubing. A little bit broke at the moment too, so um, so I will, I'm gonna make this out. And I want it to be solid at the back anyway, so I'm just gonna. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna clean it up, face it. I'll bring you back in a little bit. There ain't any use you can watch me face parts. I broke down, decided I was gonna try my other, get out my other oil cup. Uh, 
there's a couple of my friends that are going to get a couple of these. I'm, I've actually mailed out some to several of my friends, uh, several other YouTubers, uh, and let them try them out, see what they think. Uh, so they should be getting them before this video comes out, hopefully. If they do, I don't really care. It's not a secret. I just wanted to do it. So. I decided this is the, a little Amazon cup right here. One thing I don't have a lot of is taper shank drills. Uh, and what I've got is I ain't got, actually I only own one and it was in a, in a buy somewhere along the way I got. Um, I do have a lot of S and Ds. So what my plan here is, this has got to be, a, you know, I'm on, this is a fairly deep three and something inch hole. So what we're going to do, we're going to bore a lot of it. But I'm going to drill it, start with, with this drill. I'm not rightly sure what the size of it is, but it's a taper shank. And let me make sure that thing's tight, too. It might be. Now that's a lot of pressure. Let me make sure I've tightened up. I'm chuck. So sometimes I'm there just to snug my chuck. Now, I don't have none of them fancy eagle oilers. My buddy Tom, he scored one at Bloomin' Swap Meat for $5. I don't blame him. I was, I'd have broke my arm getting the $5. If that had been the last $5 I'd have had, I'd have bought that Eagle Oil. It's about like me buying a set of calipers for 15 and I about broke my arm getting the wallet out. So. I'm going to show you me drilling on this a little bit, and I'm going to take you out and put you to sleep, as Harold says. I said, I'm running about 200 or 220, and I'm not pushing. I got to go in this piece here about three, a little over three and a half inches, so this is going to take a while. There's just no need to be a boy. I forgot to turn the mic on. We're roughing this out with something like a 15 16 so I can get in there with a boring bar. This will probably, and this is going to be pushing a lot of limits. I got my lathe at about 200 RPM, and um, I'm just trying to get this hole roughed out enough to where I can kind of work with it. You'll notice I, I've got a, a Jacob's Chuck in there, Jacob's Tight. It actually is a Jacob's Chuck. It's, a, it's not a, a, a super chuck, but it's a, it is a Jacobs. I did pick it up off eBay just for this purpose because I just don't have no S and I mean, I just don't have a lot of taper shank drill, and I do have S and D. And this is just a slow process, pushing limits of everything. Sometimes in the home shop, when you just don't have everything to work with, that. You know, your own, you know, because of budgets and whatever. I mean, it'd be wonderful to have a set of uh, taper shank drills that would cover me up to some of these bigger diameters. Probably on my wish list is what I would do. And this is, you know, I'm gonna have to use pretty much the depth of this drill to do this to get deep enough that I can bore it. I don't know if I'm in there deep enough yet. I'm still got a ways to go, and that's the problem with this drill setup. I'd like to have longer, you know, you just deal what you got. Bring you back. All right, one of the things I had to do, and I, I'm going to probably edit, but I had to remove, this is a design fault of my own. And um, so... When I've loosened the screws up, you'll notice I could not get to my um, set screw. So what I ended up doing was just locking this thing down, which won't let it move. Now I can tighten everything up, maintain my center height, hopefully. We'll see here in a minute. So one of the things i done here was take the, that one screw completely out of the plot. So it would work. 
Now, we've got a little, let me set myself a little bit of a gap. Try to get as short as I can. This is a long, this bar still may chatter. There's a rule on these steel bars, usually three times the diameter out for length. So any of these small bars like this, once you get them out over an inch, inch and a half, you're really pushing it. This one's going to be out three and a quarter. So theoretically, <coughs> by theory, you need to be running about a one inch bar uh, a little over to be thin to three to one rule. We'll just have to make do again because obviously this is a small hole. I'll bring you back when I get started. I got too aggressive on my first bore and I had to back off so well this whoa that's still too much. I gotta get in there and kind of hit it. And just see I'm still off a little so what I'm gonna do is I put the first man off camera and I got too aggressive. Because I got deeper into the bore Chips with nowhere to go was trying to load the lathe down. We're running about 800 RPM. So we can't take big cuts. We'll bore them out to get rid of all the bike lay. Hopefully we'll get up here close to get this bore up to snuff here in a minute. We got, this is going to be a fairly thin wall when I get done with this. We're only going to have about an eighth inch wall thickness when I'm finished. So... You know, that's going to be a problem, but we're just going to have to deal with it. We can't bore much at the time. So. Shoot a little oil up in there. And have that. set by the way I use a stop a lot and I'm sitting here watching it so when it gets to a certain point you stop and cut your stop cut the spindle off start it up and let it boil back out <coughs> I don't like that chatter. It seems to be chattering on the way out. So I may not bore it on the way out. I think it should be the last bore. I stopped and worked on my setup. Chucked it up a little bit. It still had some chatter. Thinking, well, maybe the chuck jaw helped support it. Dropped the RPM down a little bit. I mean, there ain't nothing but a flagpole going in it, but I just do not want no chatter if I could help it. If I've got it, I got it. and can't do nothing about it. But I just don't want it in there, but it's in there better than all get out. Thank gosh it's not a precision bore to be this long, so just something for a pot or for a flagpole to fit down in. So. That flagpole should fit in there, and I'll take it and check it. Uh, I'll bring you back. All right, I just drilled the hole right here, lined it up, popped the hole in it. Um, <coughs> we're going to get a quarter 20 tap. We'll be right back. Let's hope the 
hope the force is with us today. Quarter 20 pounds. Whoa, that thing ain't even tight, is it? They moved on me now. I thought I had him tight. Getting a little stubbornly noisy today, but that's fine. That little movement ain't gonna hurt nothing. This ain't rocket science. This is just a for a flag hole. Everything's loose as a goose in this anyway. If I'd have measured the pipe, I could have bored it closer. But then what happens when you get a different flagpole? So, make it like the original. All right, I sawed this out. I'm sorry. I thought I had the uh, camera turned on. I noticed the red light wasn't working. I apologize. So, we just sawed this out real quick. All this is is a plate fits the bottom, fit the bottom of this. So this what actually what we're going to do is we're just going to weld this to this just like that paint the whole thing up and mount it on the house the plan uh, we'll get back to it okay i transferred punch these things let me get over here a little better maybe it won't be in the way but you can kind of see what i'm doing i transfer punch these holes or three of them and uh, just you know laid the old plate out transfer punch three holes and we're just going to knock up real east three and line them up put the fourth one in so we can weld all this together uh, again none of this is what you call rocket science because it's nothing it's got to be precise it just got to screw back up into the house i want it in the neighborhood there's three of the holes. Let me get the last one lined up. I'll drill it off camera. t berm I'm just going to do it the old school way like I taught machine shops. I'll put the welding D-bar in. Just swap the part up in there. We used to D-bar a lot of parts machine shop just like this. Just take your little welding D-bar. That's why one good thing about this welding. Now mine's not actually a welding. But... These welding types, countersinks, D burrs are really good because you can just handle them like that. Let me get all this lined up so we can weld it. That's my welding setup. I've got it clamped off and, and, and scheduled. Now I'm just going to turn my welder on here in a minute. Pack it up, and weld it. I'm the, you know, I don't show much welding on my channel, so now everything's ready to go. So that's the weld setup right there. This is the after the welding. Um, I just kind of buzzed it over there real good. It's welded all the way around to that plate and it's got to cool. So then we're going to paint it white and then it'll go up. So that's the, you know, the only thing left painting. So that's the completed flag bracket because that's going to mount just exactly flush like we wanted it. It's no angle because the flag needs to go straight out. So, I guarantee that ain't going to move no wind. So, uh, hopefully, that's got that little job done, except painting and putting up. I hope you enjoyed today's video. I enjoyed making it for you. This, uh, again, a quick thanks to all the folks who subscribe and comment on my channel. And if you're not yet a subscriber, please hit the little subscribe button there, you know, below the video. Uh, again, this is a copyrighted production of James Deadman Sawlogs Plastic Hubs. And I hope you enjoyed today's video, and I will see you on the next video.